Hello guys and welcome to another sport creation challenge where you guys in the comments will issue me challenges and ideas and I will try my best to fulfill them. In the last challenge we had the only odd number of parts challenge so I could only work with the numbers of like 1, 3, 5, 7 etc which made it a little bit tricky in terms of symmetry. Uh, turns out I did turn a little bit, a little bit, just, just, just a smidgen like kind of mucked up. So hopefully we have a better chance this time. <laughs> I, I suspect this one's actually, I probably can't fail on this one, so I hope not. So, moving on. <laughs> so a bunch of you guys were all suggesting that I have a creation where I'm only using like the same couple of parts. And some of you said like only use one part, some said two, some said three. So I'm going to go ahead and build maybe the three parts challenge. So I'm going to use a palette of three individual parts, or I can use those parts as many times as I want. It can only be of those parts. And I was specified that limbs do not count, but nothing was said about any other parts, such as hands, feet, mouth. So that's going to be quite interesting. And just to spice things up just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and do this without any mods. So we're doing this in vanilla. So here is our lovely simple base. Right then, so I am thinking of some kind of humanoid. Now a lot of you guys are probably going to recognise the uh, the theme I'm going for here with the whole, you know, I can only use uh, an X amount of parts. Some of you will recognise it's a very, it's a very popular old school uh, spore creation theme thing. <laughs> It'll make more sense as I uh, progress onwards. Now, since, as we just said, or as I just said, it was never specified if a uh, hands, feet, or mouth count, I'm going to go ahead and assume that they do not. Just for the extra challenge. Since, you know, like, what's the point in, you know, making all these little rules and such? It has become a challenge, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and put one mouth there. Just, you know, so that I can save it, because um, vanilla creations require a mouth to be saved. Now that we have that, I can only choose from two more parts left. Now, first of all, we go ahead and get the limbs, which are specified not to count. So, I... Yeah, just humanoid limbs. It's going to be like a general bit of a humanoid creature. I'm thinking something kind of armoured, obviously alien, because this is not going to look at any, anything like human at all, or anything natural. Right, let's go ahead and grab that piece as well then. Do that. It probably won't animate either, which I, I'm not really that bothered about, just for the sake of the challenge. I mean... Well, actually, it'll probably animate someone. Its arms will be useless. <laughs> Maybe we can do something about that. But the actual legs, I mean, it could walk around on that little subset. It just won't look very good. Right. Do a bit of that then. Better that. The legs look a little bit big, actually, come to think of it. Uh, it is fine. It's fine. We can probably offset it by all the details later on. I'll say details. <laughs> by the one single detail stacked endlessly. <laughs> which you guys will see shortly. Right. And those forearms are a little bit too chunky there. I'm going to go ahead and use these ones instead. If I can attach it. There we go. <laughs> Eventually I'll get it right. There we go. Okay then. So, do a bit of that, a bit of that. Just, as always, work with the form first. Have the form. Just something acceptable. That's a little bit chunky though. I don't really like that. Hmm, thinking. Bring that in outwards slightly. Because see. If you ever look like a uh, skeleton of a human, the spine is never completely straight. It's always like a little bit of a curve to it. I normally exaggerate it in creatures because, you know, it's sport. You can't really get things perfect. Sometimes a bit of exaggeration is required. And sometimes it makes it a, bit of, a little bit more interesting. Go ahead and do that. Make the legs all nice and posed-ish. Maybe have the arms like kind of bent backwards a little bit like that. I don't know. It'll... It's just temporary, you know, like, once we get some details going, it'll all make a little bit more sense. We'll have a bit of an idea of terms of weight, in terms of posture, etc. I think I'm focusing too much on the body right now. <laughs> right. Do that, do that, and s screw it, I'm done, I'm done for now. Actually, my cups look stupid. I mean, I've never been great at humanoid bodies. I've always been a bit of a pain for me. <laughs> always extremely finicky. Maybe if I try that limb instead then. That for the, uh, for the shoulders. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Just just a little bit. Not not great, but a little bit. Maybe it's because he needs actual shoulders, not just like whatever those are. Screw it, it's enough. Okay then. Right then. So, as many of you are probably going to be able to guess from this, the first part that I am going to use out of my three that I'm allowed to use, one of them being the head, is going to be the good old trusty nail down. Yep, I think a lot of you can already see where this is going. It's going to be a KDC creation. Now, 
for a lot of you who probably don't know what the KDC is, the KDC used to be a, a uh, like a a bit of a theme slash clan back in the day. It stood it stood for the No Down Clan, and the entire theme or the entire basis of the clan was make creatures make using the uh, KDC part, or sorry, the uh, No Down part, and it was really popular back in the day, and it's fantastic because it was amazing, just how much flexibility and customization you could get just from this one simple part. It was brilliant. I personally really liked it. I made my fair share of KDC creatures. Probably not the best. <laughs> well, actually, one of my creations, probably one of my um, one of my vanilla creations I'm the most proud about is actually a KDC creation, which was the I can't remember what it was called now. I think I called like a World Dragon. If any of you may recall from my, you know, like back in um, the olden days, I had a creature. It was like a it abused the invisible limbs glitch because it is possible to get invisible limbs in vanilla support without mods. It's very tricky and very hard to do, but it was possible. And using that, I made a a purely like no down dragon that would look like a little, a very small little eastern dragon, you know, like on the little Chinese ones. And it was wrapped around this invisible limb, and it kind of just looked like it was a floating. It, what's the best word? Best way to say it. Um, it's kind of hard to describe that actually showing you guys, but it was like it was wrapped around an invisible sphere, and it was floating, and inside the sphere had a uh, like a little star inside it. And just like I said, it was one of my favourite creations, and it happened to be a KDC one, which, like, looking back on all these years later, I'm still very proud about. Especially as, you know, like, it was vanilla. There was no mods. <laughs> back before I used any mods, believe it or not. Right. So that's uh, a little bit there. Now, like I said, I'm not really sure what we're going for here. It's just, it's just going to be an alien humanoid. As vague and simple as that. Since... There's not really much I can customise with in terms of like just adding KDC or uh, no down parts. I keep calling KDC parts. I mean, it may as well be. So, so there's not like a whole much, um, a whole load I can add on to this. So we're just going to like make it look pretty. However I can, it's probably going to end up looking very armoured. A lot of um, cresting, a lot of patterns, probably a lot of horns. A lot of armour and I've already said armour. <laughs> oh dear, you know what I mean. So that's that for the basics. Right, so what more can I add to this then? It's just going to be using like the crap out of the, this one specific part. And I won't be using one other part in a while, but I kind of want to get like as much as I can out of this one. As this part here, the, the uh, no down, is going to be like the majority of the form of the creature. This would be like... <sighs> this would be like the overall majority. Whereas the other parts I'm planning on using, it's just going to be for the more finer details. Well, not really details, more like features, crests, etc to uh, offset this. Now, I'm not really, hmm, I'm not really intending for these little spikes in the middle here to like jet out the chest, but I'm actually kind of liking it. I think I might, yeah, go ahead and return those, just to say like a little bit of extra dimension, a little extra detail, you know, like via the budget. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty much just going to be experimenting with this, to be honest. I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but that is the joy of sport, is you can always do things like that, just make a thing and see how it goes and I've always, I've always recommended experimenting like you never know what you get unless you try you know and especially unless you try try thinking differently try using things in a way that you never normally would sometimes you get like amazing results from doing that now obligatory crotch pad because for some reason that always just looks better on human creatures probably because it makes it look a little bit less um <laughs> i don't know like a little bit less revealing i don't know but it's just a thing that not only I, but a lot of others always do. <laughs> I guess like more more like a kilt, I guess. Well, not really a kilt, more like a loincloth. I don't know. Right. Now then, how, what more can I do for this? I think actually I'm going to go ahead and use the other part already. So the other part is going to use just a feather. So it's going to be like a bit of a KDC feathery thing. For the feathers, I was going to use those like as obligatory crests. Obligatory like plumage and such. That's, you know, going to be quite obvious later on. But I also wanted to use it to like try to try and uh, pick out like fingers and such, or digits more like. Not perfectly, of course. Like maybe it's just again like some funky weird plumage on the creature, uh, but it's just something to kind of like offset the more harsher, uh, nearly downy parts. <laughs> nearly downy? Did I really just say that? All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and add that then. And you know, it just adds like a bit of variety. Normally with the KDC creatures. Uh, they were like 
the majority of them were almost entirely in nail downs. People might use the occasional, say, like the hay corn piece over here, maybe the jelly button, maybe a couple of other parts. Just like add like a little bit of variety, just a little bit of emphasis on certain details and such. But, you know, the absolute majority was just using this one part non-stop. I think I still see like a couple of those kind of creatures every now and then. Although, <laughs> what I've noticed actually, uh, come to think of it, is um, quite often I'll see like KDC and Inessus interchanged quite a bit. But the Inessus being like the uh, pearly... <sighs> a very difficult one to explain actually, to describe. I always thought it was just like more the colour scheme and a certain amount of like certain palatal parts. But I was actually corrected. It turns out it's more... A bit of a UBD kind of thing. It's really hard to describe these uh, genres without, like, you know, without you guys already knowing. <laughs> so I guess I, I probably should just stop talking, kind of think of it about all the different clans. I might be just confusing people not familiar with it. Oh dear. You can tell it's been a while, can't you? <laughs> uh, back in the day when it was all about the clans, all about the different styles and such. The good old days. And now it's just dragons upon dragons upon dragons and come to think of it, I'm not exactly... I'm not exactly um, innocent of that now, am I? <laughs> All I ever bloody do is dragons and dinosaurs, but hey, dinosaurs are fun. Right, so I am just realised I have been like rambling a hell of a lot. <laughs> but then again though, like I can't really say much while I'm creating this. Just talk, you know, just chatter, just ramble. Because this creature kind of speaks for itself, like all I really am doing is just stacking the same three parts again and again. Right now I'm just adding on pieces to the uh, arms and legs just to have, like once again, like I was saying earlier, just like, a little bit of extra variety. A bit of extra weight and depth because as malleable as the Noadown part is, there are some things that you can't really do. One of them right now being, you know, let's say for example I grabbed that there, make it nice and tall and thin. And I was stacking up that way, it just wouldn't be the same, it just looked very spiky and I don't want it to be entirely spiky. Which again, you know, variety. What I do want, however, is to add some sort of feet. Now I was originally thinking of using the feathers for feet, I'm not actually sure it's going to work anymore. So instead, I'm going to use some of these. Making like big rugged toes, which sounds really weird. <laughs> well I have a bit of an issue due to... Um, the limb or the limb not like being entirely collected to the floor so I've got like a bit of KD, a bit of a no down parts like jutting forth or I think I may have just about bounced it out now come to think of it. I think that's okay. And like I said I'm not expecting this creature to be able to animate like anything well at all. In fact it's probably just gonna be floating by the end of this come to think of it. But it doesn't have to be. As always it's just for the sake of the challenge and yeah I did say it was not specified if I can use hands or feet so I'm not I'm not going to take the easy route and just add on these parts just for, like, you know, because oh, it wasn't said, therefore I could. <laughs> it just defeats the whole challenge aspect when you, like, make up excuses like that, in my opinion. And it's just me, guys. Like, as I said in the previous ones, I enjoy challenges. I like, I like things being difficult. It's a lot more satisfying when you finish it, knowing you actually tried instead of, oh, but I could do this. You know? Oh, but I could do that. This wasn't said, therefore I can. It's like, oh, boom, I'm done. Oh, that was easy. Let's just go ahead then add some a whole load of DNA. Lots and lots and lots of DNA because yes. Because yes, good reason. Right, now this is feeling a little bit generic. I will say that. The feathers kind of make it add a little bit more to it, but otherwise it's feeling very generic, especially the heads. The heads right now is really, really boring. So I'm thinking, I should get rid of these parts here. And what am I going to do next? I'm going to grab on these digits down there. But be careful not to place on the head because the head is asymmetrical. Uh, I've made it asymmetrical because it halves the uh, value of the complexity which means you know I just have like more of a budget to work with in terms of complexity. We do that instead. I know having like a bit of a snout to this might be quite predictable but I just feel like it's gonna be a little bit more interesting to look at. We'll go ahead and do that then. In fact I think I might even do that so it's like got a bit of a thing down the middle. I don't know what that thing is, but it's just a little bit more interesting than whatever it was previously. Add some more plumage, because I can. In fact, it's probably going to look like some kind of animal now. Which, to be fair, is not a problem. Not a problem at all. Right. I just realised I'm kind of sounding a little bit like Bob Ross. <laughs> at least in my head, some of the things I'm saying about how 
like oh i don't know what this is so just add this bit in here and i'll make it all nice and happy feeling nice and cheerful a little bit bob rossi <laughs> to be fair like that'd be absolutely amazing if that if that was actually a thing if i was actually starting to like sat like be a little bit reminiscent of bob ross you know what guys i think that'd be an absolute achievement <laughs> I have always found him quite quite inspiring. Maybe just how cheerful and relaxed he is, and that's what not that I try to be him, definitely not, but I have the same values in that I like things being just nice and relaxed, enjoy the process, not just have it all stressed out, not just um, you know, race for a goal, just enjoy it. Yeah. I'm I am i am sort of more like I'm pretending to be him now. <laughs> I guarantee not intentional, although not not a bad thing either. Right, so I feel like right here, can you guys see that little like, that little corner bit there, that little dip? I'm not liking that just random thing, which is why I'm like trying to give it like some kind of horns right now. I actually have to make them a bit smaller so I can curve them, place them inwards a bit more. There we go. A little bit of a uh, bit of an irregularity there that I just didn't quite like. I'm not going to make them proper like horns. Actually, yeah, maybe I will. It kind of suits the plumage, come to think of it. Right. I have another one down there so I kind of frame the plumage overall. About there? Yeah, not not too bad. I mean, it's a very odd creature. I'm not really sure what this is meant to be, but it's not bad. Right, go ahead and grab that blunted tip thing in English there. And I'm going to replace the uh, back spike to that with ones instead. Maybe actually. Not really liking those actually, come to think of it. But I'm having a bit of an issue where the other end is like kind of um, pointing through into the creature. Maybe if I do that one there. Okay, that one's kind of hidden. There you go. Like you can see it point out there. Is that a problem? Maybe if I, like, can I use that to my advantage? Nah, I don't think I can actually. Just make it a little bit smaller then so it's hidden again. Then that one there, it is kind of pointing through a little bit. There we go. Rotate and now it's nice and hidden again. In fact, I'm going to leave it there or end it there. And do the rest of that with again more plumage. It might be a very rep uh, repetitive creature, but let's face it. When I'm only able able to use uh, a limited palette of like two or three parts, it's going to be very, very, um, very repetitive. Just hopefully, I can make it varied enough where it's still interesting to look at. Hopefully. Now I'm aware that the rear is uh, completely blank, but let's face it. Now it's not like this going to be a well animating, well, you know. A polished creature so am i actually okay to focus entirely on the front and the sides and not really on the back like i don't mind that let me see add a bit more actually no just that one there and i think something on the shoulders as well and since we have all that uh, coming up the chest there i quite like it when a creature has like more extended from the shoulders it just like i don't know it makes it a kind of a dramatic kind of daunting if you will maybe like formidable i don't know Feels more like warlike. Okay, so like that. Let's make it a little bit smaller. That way it kind of transitions into something. Or into nothing in this case. Right, it's so like that. It kind of has like a bit of a tribal feel, in my opinion. Maybe I'm just crazy. Wouldn't it be the first time. I'm kind of mucking up that placement though there. About there, there we go. Make it shorter, make it inwards, or turn it inwards. That way it's not clipping into the bicep. Right, so now. If that's a bit too uniform, maybe if I make that one smaller, make that one a lot, in fact, make that one a lot longer. That one a little bit smaller. That one a bit longer. There we go. Now, okay, that feels a little bit less uniform, a little bit more varied. But I feel like I'm like miss, I'm lacking something in both the legs and the neck area there. Technically the arms as well, but I'm not really that concerned about the arms. They feel like they've got. A good good enough amount not great but good enough but the chest and legs or the chest and thighs what can i add there that is the question and a good part about the nail down part is that as you guys probably noticed i've been using it in like uh, three different styles one is you know having the uh, textured part visible the other is having it flipped halfway so it's going to have like a uh, multiple different textures going on and the other that you can do is just have it flipped inwards or inverted like that and it will take on the texture of the skin which can be nice like define certain features and such and i'm not sure how to use it in this case i think actually a little bit 
a bit basic, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and use it like some kind of um, scales or like belly armor. A thing that you see a lot in dragon creations. Again, probably a little bit basic, but yeah, why not? <laughs> as simple as that, really. Why not? I mean, if you guys can think of a reason why not to, then sure, fine. But I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and make it all asymmetrical by holding A on the keyboard. That way I've halved the value of half the complexity and I just have like, a little bit more of a complexity budget to work with. Now we have the thighs. What can I do with the thighs? Um, I'm thinking have just one like that. Nothing really more to it. Just adds a little bit, a little bit extra. Although it is kind of a little bit jagged. Hmm. Maybe upwards like this then. Up here. Cool. In fact, maybe I'll have another one. Oh, actually, we can make like some kind of effect with these. You see, it doesn't even have to be much. It doesn't have to be complicated or anything special. Just, there you go. Just a little bit extra. Just gives it so much. We still have a bit of complexity left. And I could add more by, you know, make that one asymmetrical, for example. Make the face one. All of these ones down here there you go so now once again i've just uh, generated another orb of uh, complexity even though that wing is still locked out so we are getting close to uh, complexity limit what more can we add <laughs> i'm not really sure there is much more i mean i, I could just add like giant feathers on the back that kind of look like wings or i feel like it's a little bit a bit typical in fact i think i'm gonna do a sort of favor and i'm just gonna like cover it as ass <laughs> just give it like little bone plates there that way it's you know it's, it's got a bit of dignity <laughs> or maybe just you know for the benefit of having it covered one there maybe that's looking a little bit dodgy down there so i will actually cover that up since since this is a vanilla creation i could share it on this popedia um and yeah since i've said on video it's all exposed i kind of feel more of a requirement to cover it up now <laughs> if i'm gonna share it there we go, I like that. Like that, so that was all nice and decent. Make that one asymmetrical as well, so that way I've just once again generated a, a, a new... A new slot, if you will. Right, in fact, yeah, I think I'm just going to do the same thing I did on the front. Have a bit of that going on there. One there. If I can rotate it that way, there we go. And then one more up there. So now it's all nice and consistent all the way through. Probably not entirely neat, but... It, it just doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> Does not have to be. Bit of that, bit of... Oh, wrong part. There we go. That's okay. I mean, it's okay. That would be the important part. Right. Any more I can add? I'm not sure what more I can, can add, to be honest. It is interesting, though. <laughs> Considering it was just completely made up on the spot. Like... Just stacking, stacking, and stacking until something came out. I think that looks quite alright, actually, to be honest. Um, the chest is a bit weird. Like, I will definitely agree on that. The chest is kind of weird. I probably could have made it, like, a little bit neater, a little bit more interesting. I don't know, but I'm not entirely concerned with it. Gonna go ahead and see if I can, like, sneak in a feather part around there just to, like, give it a little bit more. Maybe, like, uh, I'll make it, like, really wide... Now, if I actually make it a little bit longer like that. In fact, it could probably transition into the crest or into like all that um, chesty feathery parts there. There you go, that looks a little bit better actually. And I can fit in one more part. Where is that one more part going to be? I kind of want these to be fluffed out a little bit more. That way when you look at it from head on, you can kind of see like a bit of a, a bit of a suggestion of the feathery bits there. There you go, just a little bit more. Hmm. I guess the last piece that we can add should be down here. A bit like that, and make this one really quite small. And just like that. Now when it comes to the colour scheme, the colour scheme is going to be very, very simple. Uh, since the KDC were always like very simplistic creatures. Or like in terms of colour scheme, let me go ahead and do that. There you go. So now, like, like I was mentioning earlier, we've got all these... No down creatures here, like the one from Ozlos there. Many from me. Um, very like shiny pearl kind of uh, colour schemes. But you also have like the Inessis one here, for example, which is actually the same kind of colour schemes, but like the same theme and style. There was no strict rule, not, not to my 
knowledge, not that I can remember. But it was always like a bit of a thing. Oh, in fact, since I was mentioning earlier, this was the dragon I was referring to. There you go, which is to this day is still one of my favourite creatures, especially considering this is vanilla. That is not modded, not at all. <laughs> one of my old favourite. In fact, let's just use that colour scheme, come to think of it. Let's see how this looks with that colour scheme. The classic variation. I quite like it. We can either have that or a bit of a more pinkish one. Uh, with the pinkish, let's go with. In fact, let's use that one. How does this one look? I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> right, cool. Cool. Well, there we have it. <laughs> just like that, we're already finished. Um, oh wow, I just realised what I called it. I'm just going to call it Nerly. Uh, wait. There you go, Nelly. I've, um, some of you may have noticed I'm not very creative with my names anymore in terms of the vanilla creations. It doesn't have to be, I mean, in the end, as I've always stressed, I just like having fun with these things and <laughs> I, I save my efforts for like the more serious days and the more serious creations. When it comes to these challenges, it's just a nice little fun thing, something for me to relax with and yeah. I'm just I'm just repeating myself at this point, but I quite like how it came out. I did say the animation's going to be awful, and it is doing some funky hip stuff. Wow, that's just uh, that's just disturbing. But there we go, then, guys. There we go. You guys challenged me to use a very small palette of parts, so you'd be able to use those individual parts as many times as I want, but only a very small palette. And uh, like I said. The limbs were specified to not count, the head was not, therefore I only gave myself two parts I could play with. And I gotta say, I'm quite happy with the results, especially as it is not a quadruped, <laughs> as I always do, instead we went with a humanoid design. Let me know guys, let me know what you think of this. Feel free to try it out, like I said, the whole um, KDC thing was a very popular thing back in the day. The nail down is extremely malleable and it is a lot of fun figuring out different ways to use it. But overall, just in general, the challenge itself is quite fun and it is quite enjoyable trying to figure out within the, con within the constraints or confinement how to use certain parts in certain different ways. But anyway, guys, as always, give me more challenge ideas. I really enjoyed doing these and I'm writing them all down to, get to go through them over time. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoyed the challenge itself. Have a lovely day, guys, and I will see you next time.